Good afternoon. I've engineered this because I can't see the screen and see where I'm shooting. If I stand here in front of that, I think you should be able to see me. Anyway, I've got some very good news for you. Someone has very kindly offered me some equipment and it could be really helpful. In particular, a belt sander. It's one thing, you know, I was actually considering just looking at the price because there is cheap equipment about nowadays because for my project I do, you know, it would come in extremely helpful. So I'm very grateful for that. And we'll have it uh, picked up soon, one way or another. Uh, meanwhile, you know, we've plenty to do. And so just for today, I thought I've also bought some, been to a shop I know, a nice hardware shop, just out of town. And I've got some screws, um, two taps, in case I break one, because you have to be careful, especially in blind holes, but these small taps, if you break one, oh, it can be very discouraging. However, however, because I've got two, and I know where I'm going to, uh, I know where I'm going to, more or less what I'm going to do now. So just for today, I thought we'd have a, a short, couple of short demonstrations and just see how we go on. Now if I go between there and the camera, with luck, you should still see what I'm doing. So we'll just show you this. That's the base. Um, I did cut it off that side and I found some of these uh, very thin cutting discs. I found some more in the shop where we get them from. Not many people seem to stock them. They're very expensive actually. Yeah, because they're, well, you get their uh, 12 quid for five. So they're more than two quid each. They do last normally in steel, but you do, when you're cutting thick stuff like this, you can quite quickly get through them. So we want to uh, take that as it comes. I've also today bought two new ordinary grinding discs, like that one. That's not the one I've used, that's an old one. But, uh, you know, I mean, for instance, I was, I've ground the inside of that hopefully slightly concave. Now the bottom is not going to be smooth and nicely done. We've got enough to do with doing the rest of it. You know, we can clean it up a bit better at the end possibly, but for instance, just to remember what that was like, and just to grind that hollow in the middle, took me three quarters of an hour, and just about used up a disc. So I mean it's, uh, you know, without, without lathes and stuff, it is quite heavy work, and plus the fact you know, it's very noisy, one thing or another. So we've got the base. I've also found that one of my heirlooms was a horse rasp, right? And they're very good quality. And I found that they're the best things to do. So I've just quickly add a scrape over the top of that, don't know if you can see or not. And again, that's, well, I'm stood behind the camera, I still can't hit right, but anyway, that will do it, but now I've got to grind, because there's a hollow there, I can see the high spots, so I grind the high spots off, file it again, grind the high spots, so, you know, we won't, uh, as I say, we won't bore you with all that, because it's laborious and time consuming. Now some people make small wooden mould and things like that of course, but all we know so far is roughly the height the flywheel has to be from the base, about there. Now it doesn't need to be much larger than that, so if we make a cardboard template about where it wants to be, and I may step it over yet, so it's still open to alteration. But, we'll just 
quickly put round here first. Now that will give us roughly the height that we want. Now I want to go about to the middle. Right, so if that goes there, I will now I don't need to cut that top, I'll just cut that off there. And that will then sit there. I've gone a fraction low, but I'm not too worried about that, to be honest, at the moment. It, it may come slightly higher. Anyway, we now... I'm thinking, if it comes to the end, that's right, that's what I'm thinking, I'm sorry, it's, it's me, this is. Right, I'm just, as I say, we're just doing this quickly to try and show some sort of idea like that. So, if we make something like that and mount the flywheel there, say, and of course we won't know the orientation that way until I get the cylinder on and the crank pin in, because the crank shaft, of course, has to line up. So, but something like that could actually be quite a bit shorter. It's just to give me a rough idea of size and then it will save me a lot of work because I can cut it out with this nice piece that I did. And as you can see that's not too difficult a job. You know, so we can we can get a sort of template of what we're after to give us an idea of height and everything else and in fact it would, these corners are very nice but uh, I don't think we can use those on here it would be nice to it would because if I just ground that edge flat that's actually quite a nice shape and we could go something like that. As I say, at the moment I'm not sure, but I've got to not cut it and, fi and file it without. Now I'm just going to move the camera and I'll just show you. Right. I've got to make sure that we've got enough height. If that goes there, I've got to make sure that we've got enough height to put the cylinder on. Right, I'll just set up this very short demonstration, the first one. Now I'll put a new hacksaw blade in and it's the coarsest one I've got because you need coarse stuff for aluminium. All I'm going to do is just show you how far you get through even though it's aluminium in about 30 seconds to a minute. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you can see how far that is, but it's not very far. Right. So we want to keep the cutting of this to a minimum. This camera goes out of focus if I go much closer, but I'll just try and get a little closer. I'm fairly sure, if I'm still behind the camera, that you can see it there. So, you know, it's going to take 20 minutes to saw through there, isn't it? And that's with a new hacksaw blade. So, we want to keep the cutting to quite a minimum. So, I'm now going to do another short demonstration. Now, for this demonstration, I'm just going to show you how long it takes 
to file a small flap. That's fairly soft and this rasp does work quite well as I said. It's very sharp, very good quality rasp. But of course, now the top's soon gone and I've got a little flap. And if I turn it over to the smooth side, we can in fact get it fairly flat and not too bad. Then of course that's where the sanders and that will come in. So as you can see, hopefully, we've got a very small flap on there. So, as you can see with that large piece, like this, to get that hollow out, you've got to grind everything off here. And that's quite a major task. Now for my final demonstration, I'm going to see if we can tap a hole for these cap screws I got. The lad in the shop, he wasn't the brightest thing and I asked for two taps because in case you break one. And uh, also I asked for two drills and I bought some more. I'm not 100% sure which is, oh it's the bigger one I think, I think it is, anyway we'll start small and just see, now I've marked this hole, I've only just marked it, It's not. we're not doing that but for some reason when I'm wearing these ready reader glasses I use I don't get things square so I'm doing this without just to see because as I say, we'll probably be able to drill the holes squarer. But, let's see how we go on. It does drill fairly easily. But you see, even this thick piece is taking some getting through. There we are. And the end isn't too big. I think I need the larger one. I'm just going to check and see that we should just be able to start it. No, that's hitting the vice already. Oh dear. I thought I was at the top. I might just be able to get enough clearance. No, I've realigned the work, so hopefully we can tap this, if it's given me the right size, it should be. Now, I'm letting the tap follow itself, and the thing is with tapping, um, the reason I've gone for a slightly larger size, and he also gave me, yeah, it's tap, it is cutting all right. It doesn't matter because it's very slightly larger than the proper tapping size. However, that's not a problem. You know, we're not really holding anything, are we? You know, there's many ways you could do this. But, there we are. We've successfully done it. Now, if you break a tap, it can be when you, especially when you're tapping into a blind hole. That's a hole without an exit. 
which I will be doing but the trick to it is to drill much deeper and I can do of course because the only thing I'm holding generally is the base right on that large piece I'm going to be drilling up to screw it to the base me. So, there's the hole, and there's the screw, and it's alright, it's a nice loose fit, it's what do we want, you know, we want to, so, I mean, we're not holding very much, and I got them all quite long, because I can, of course, cut them off, you know, because most of the stuff will be about that size, about that thickness I should say, it'll be about that thickness and as you can see they're long enough and we only need half that in a blind hole to hold it, you know we only need a few threads, so that's going to work, the only thing is having one tap so well if I break it but the thing is on this project as I keep stating we're not doing it that's actually made a good job that has actually made a good job and you can't see from here because nothing is square obviously Oops, drop that one on isn't it? Right, what fingers? Now, it's not quite square as you can see, but like I've said many times, we're not going for model of the year. And for drilling freehand, you know, and I shouldn't have to drill freehand, so. As I say, it will be nice to be able to do a better job than I was originally intending. So that concludes the demonstration for today, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you like it. Finish off where we started. I hope you like this demonstration because I do know that one or two are interested in the engineering aspects of it. And that's partly what it's about. In fact, it's probably mainly what it's about. And also, we can uh, again thank the people for the generosity. And we'll look forward to doing something else in the near future.